Hello, my name is Diane Schindler. You are listening to In the Know. This podcast show includes writing tips, travel tips, and my views of life from savvy and thoughtful to quirky and humorous. I hope you enjoy the show. Bom dia from Madeira Island, Portugal. This is my first podcast from Portugal, and I've been here two weeks and two days. It's remarkable. I want to talk today about Madeira, Madeira Island, Mexico, a community on Madeira Island, Moby Dick, yeah, stay tuned for that, O Museo de Balaya, as well as my adjustments to my new location so far. As you may know, I started traveling in 2016, in January of 2016, as a solo nomad. As a matter of fact, I came right here to this very location in January of 2016. And I skipped, hopped, and jumped and enjoyed 46 countries in those four years with my medium-sized suitcase, a guitar, backpack, and tennis racket. There was no nesting in those four years. And the past two years, I have been in the United States. I didn't intend to be there for two years, but as we all have experienced, a pandemic kicked in. During those two years, I was thinking I, I want to move to Portugal, but I got caught up in the p pandemic and couldn't go. Because I wanted to move to Portugal, I really didn't even nest in my beautiful apartment on Amelia Island, Florida. By nesting, I mean making my apartment, making my home my own, decorating it the way in which I want to decorate it and put, put my personal stamp on it. I never did that because I was moving. I was moving. I was always moving. Well, here I am now, and I have moved to Portugal. It is a change in mindset. It is a process, and I'm working on it. I didn't allow myself to even think much about Portugal as my new home over the past few months, only because I was focusing on the process of obtaining the D7 visa from the Portuguese consulate. Oh, I think it took me uh, about three months from the very beginning into the time I had attained the first level of acceptance for this visa. Now, the process of gathering the data and the documents for the D7 visa is not that difficult, but it is tedious. So I didn't give myself time to think about what it might really feel like to become a Portuguese resident. Some of that, this excitement of living in Portugal bubbled up when I was arriving on the plane to the Funchal Airport in Madeira Island. As we were descending, I was looking out my window and I, I saw this vast ocean. And then as we were getting closer to the island, I could see thousands of beautiful homes and structures, all cream colored with terracotta roofs. Because Madeira is a volcanic island, mountains and hills and valleys, it's like a roller coaster of, of structures. All, again, with those, with the same colors. It's just amazing. And my heart just started beating and pounding. This is your new home, Diane. This is your new home. When I first arrived on Madeira Island, I stayed in a community called Kennesaw. I had eight days with this incredible view, this two-bedroom Two bath, large apartment, had two exterior walls, and those exterior walls were lined virtually with windows and sliding glass doors. Each wall, external wall, was 35 feet long, I would say, overlooking the ocean and overlooking Kennesaw. It was an incredible view. Now, if you watched on Facebook, you know, I've posted some of those views, and I'll post some of them also in the show notes. But I stayed there as um, just sort of a relaxing, just to do nothing but have wine 
and look outside and do a little walking. After eight days in Kennesaw, my apartment in Mashiko was ready. Medeta Island is an island about 500 miles off the mainland of Portugal. It's about that far from Morocco as well. It's 38 miles long. It's a volcanic island. Funchal is the capital. Mexico is on the northeast side of Medeta Island, once a fishing village and now a lovely community with restaurants and shops. And it's, of course, there's a beach here. And every Sunday evening, they have music. There are areas to play sports, basketball, volleyball. And as I said, there's a beach. Often people swim laps on this beach. Well, I need to swim laps, but I can't swim on the beach because I wear my goggles and look at the bottom of the pool to see where I'm going. So I was kind of afraid. So let me digress on that. I am swimming. I made arrangements with the Dom Pedro Hotel here. They have a beautiful salt water pool, salt water. I love it. And I said, can I go swimming? I'm not a guest. I'm happy to pay. And they said, of course, you can go swimming. You do not need to pay. So every other day, I'm swimming in the San Pedro Hotel. Salt water pool all by myself in the morning around 8 o'clock. That is lovely. So again, here in Mexico, it's beautiful restaurants, shops, everything that you would need, grocery stores, Pingo Dulce, Continent, Pharmacia. It's a beautiful spot. Mexico is the most eastern village, and it's also the most popular area in Madeira Island with a population. In 2011, it said about 22,000. I think it's probably increased It's probably increased in number since 2011, but let me begin. Let me tell you a little history about Mexico. So, as it was on July 1st in 1419, two explorers, Gonzalvez Zarco and Tristal Vez Chidera, disembarked on the beaches of Mexico. It was the beginning of the Portuguese discoveries. So how did the name Mexico come into existence? Well, there's a romantic legend, true or not, it's worth repeating. Seemingly, two lovers escaped from England where their love was forbidden and condemned by the church. Robert Machim, M-A-C-H-I-M, and his lovely... Anne, as fate would have it, they shipwrecked and died on the island where the first explorers arrived. They encountered two crosses to which they attributed to the lovers. The name on the cross appears to be a, quote, corruption of the surname Machim, M-A-C-H-I-M. Therefore, Machiko was born. Let me take a moment to bring your attention to my latest novel, Claim Denied. It's a thriller which takes place in Pristina, Kosovo, where I worked as a writing consultant for the American University for about eight months. Let me read to you one of the reviews on Amazon about Claim Denied. It's entitled, Great Who Done It," set in an intriguing location of Kosovo. This is written by Bookish, that's all I know, no name, and it was reviewed in the United States in August. Bookish says, I needed a good read and stumbled upon Claim Denied. I'm glad I purchased it. The storyline is well paced and the characters are interesting to say the least. The main character, Margot, is the enduring lover who refuses to quit investigating the death of someone dear. I learned a lot about Kosovo from this story. If you would like to read a well-written thriller, you will enjoy Claim Denied. Well, thank you, Bookish. I appreciate it so much. A lot of people have purchased my book, but only few have reviewed it. And this is a um, phenomenon, just not specific to, to me. But it happens with everyone or just fewer people who are willing to review. If you've read Claim Denied and you enjoyed reading it, please post a review on Amazon. 
If you haven't purchased the book, in the United States, you can order it at your local indie bookstore or in the United States or outside the United States, you can buy it on Amazon. What's this got to do with Moby Dick? <laughs> well, let me tell you. Moby Dick, as you probably know, was written by Herman Melville in 1851. There was a film in 1956. It was released on June 27th, 1956, my birthday. I was a few years in on Earth by 1956. And the film was directed by John Huston. So Huston and Ray Bradbury wrote the screenplay based on the book. The film starred Gregory Peck, Richard Basehart, and Orson Welles. What does Moby Dick have to do with Medita Island? Well, guess what happened? The film began shooting in Wales, but parts of the movie were shot at the sea in front of a traditional whaling parish in Medetta Island with real action whaling done by the whalers of Medetta Island. And of course, now there is a museum, U Museo de Balaya. I haven't visited, but I will, and I'll tell you all about it. I think it's going to be exciting there. on to adjusting. You know, when you move to a new location, there are all kinds of adjustments that have to be made. When you move to a new location that has a completely different culture, triple it. <laughs> so, but first, just the basic things about adjusting. You know, I am in this lovely apartment in Mexico. It's two bedrooms, two baths. The bedrooms have drawers, of course, lovely drawers. And so when I came here and I began unpacking, I put the things away in the drawers. I put my clothing and my, all my possessions away in the drawers and in the closets. So now what I do is try to find where I put what. I mean, sometimes it'll take me 15 minutes to find the shirt I want or the, the pants I want. It's just ridiculous. I mean, I looked one day. I know for a fact that I brought Cetaphil moisturizing lotion. Now, do you think I could find that? I looked and looked and I thought, did I not pack it? Maybe I didn't pack it. Oh, I couldn't find it. So I went to the store, of course, walked in, tried to say Cetaphil and I wrote it down and, you know, they said, no, no, no. And I ended up buying something else. I come home and guess what I found? I found the moisturizer. <laughs> I'm missing things. I can't find things. I'm stubbing my toe twice. I stubbed my toe on the shower stall. <laughs> Just pick up your feet, Diane. I didn't have to lift my feet in the shower stall when I was in the United States. But, and the shower. Oh my gosh, the shower. I have to get used to the hot water and how to control the temperature so I don't scald and freeze and scald and freeze and then freeze and scald. You know, I'm hyper. I'm excited about everything but everything is a little harder to do. Everything takes longer. I mean, to open up the plastic box that has my laundry detergent was hell. Was hell. I mean, I struggled. I, and I got a knife, and I thought I stabbed it, and I still could not open this damn box. <laughs> I wanted to throw it across the room, but I didn't. And the only reason I didn't is not because I was disciplined, but I thought to myself, I'm going to have to clean up a huge mess if I throw it across the room. And how long will it take me to clean up that mess with a new broom, a new vacuum cleaner, new to me, all that? Ugh. So it's been just two weeks and I'm still struggling, still losing things, still taking me forever to do the simplest things. I read someplace it takes a month. Lord, Lord, Lord. Well, stay tuned. Hopefully next month in two weeks, I'm looking forward to simplicity as I manage to adjust to my new location. Add to that, as I said before, the culture. You know, I happily walking to Continent, which is a grocery store, and also there's Pingle Dos, 
which is a grocery store, two different grocery stores. And the terrain here, how you walk is is um, not level. It's stones. Some areas it's stones, you know, like kind of flat, round, flat and round stones up on their edges and set in concrete. That's the easiest part. But the other ones are lo- like little slate bricks. I don't know what they are. And they're not even. So walking is a bit challenging. I started out with my Birkenstocks. That was a big mistake. So now I'm using my tennis shoes for long walks. But I'm walking to the grocery store and we're trying to rep- recognize shampoo instead of conditioner. I bought conditioner thinking it was shampoo. I bought conditioner for the laundry thinking it was laundry detergent. I did two loads of laundry with laundry conditioner. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so I'm adjust I'm adjusting. It is fun. It's fun. Let's take a deep breath. I know it's gonna get better. I'm loving the sea breezes and the sun and you've seen the photos of my walks. Incredible. Let's go back to the beginning of this podcast, though. I want to talk a little bit more about my arrival on that day at the Funchal Airport. Besides my, you know, coming back down and having that emotional experience of recognizing that this is my home, when we disembark, I have my heavy backpack, which has at least two computers in there, my carry-on, and I'm going up the escalator. Of course, There are people in front of me and there are people behind me in the escalator. It's a very tall escalator. And I start to adjust my feet and also get a better grip on my backpack. And I start falling backwards. I start falling backwards and there's nothing I can do about it. I'm trying to grab on to the handle there. I can't find it. And suddenly behind me, I hear in the noises, nobody's screaming, but people are grunting. And the men, I can hear them grunting and groaning, and I'm still falling. And I think, what am I going to do? Then somebody pushes my backpack and uprights me. There are hands all over my butt and my legs and my arms. And just as quickly as I was falling, now I am upright. It seemed like forever, and it was probably a total of 30 seconds. And I heard people in the back after they were grunting, and they started laughing when I was upright, and, they, and I heard them say in different languages, team effort, team effort. When we got to the top, I turned I saw this little boy and I, I just got so upset because I could have fallen on this little child. I said, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. They said, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I just shook because I thought I could have fallen on people. I kept shaking for at least 10 minutes. Welcome to Portugal. <laughs> Talk about an adjustment and how sweet and kind everyone was. Then I proceeded to to the immigration area, you know, where they look at your passport. As I walk up to the window, a nice young man looked at me and said something that made me understand he wanted me to take he wanted me to take down my mask as he looked at my passport. So I did that. And he said, "Oh, you are a resident." He said, Well, I will be a resident on September 9th, I hope, when I go to the CEF office, the very last step in confirming my residency. And he said, oh, yes, you are a resident. Do you want me to stamp your passport? Because it is not necessary because you are a resident. And he had this big smile on his face. And I said, well, yes, please. He he said, okay, I will do that. And with a big thud, he stamped my passport and he looked at me with a great big smile and he said, welcome to Portugal, my friend, my compatriot. Then, then is when it really hit me. I walked away, started walking down the stairs to pick up my luggage. The emotions just came to the forefront and I sobbed silently. I sobbed and thought, this is my home. This is where I live now. I will have picture.
pictures of Kennesaw, the museum, the views of my walks, and the show notes. Thank you for listening to my first podcast from Portugal. I hope to see you soon. Thanks so much for listening. If you would like to support In The Know, you can do so by subscribing and sharing In The Know with your family and friends. You can like this episode, you can leave a comment, and even add a rating. Your support is very important to our success. And thank you so much for listening. See you next time on In The Know.